one of the first things we want to do when we get our new puppy is introduce our puppy into the household. Dogs are creatures of habit. It's very important that when we bring a dog into a new environment that we introduce it properly and we show the dog exactly how we want them to act. If we show them right from the beginning what they can and can't do, it's going to make the process way easier. Far too often people bring their new puppy home and they let their puppy run through the entire house without showing the puppy exactly what the puppy can and can't do. And then they wonder why they have chewed up furniture or the dog has eaten some of the Christmas tree ornaments or has swallowed a sock or done something else that we don't want our dog or our puppy to do. And this is going to make it much easier. When you have a young puppy, remember this is the imprinting stage from I believe from when they're born to 16 weeks, but you're usually gonna get your puppy at around eight weeks. So you have eight weeks to really show them how you want them to be for the rest of their life. So this is a very, very important time. Now I strategically have placed things throughout the house that could be a normal distraction for a dog. We have some socks laying around, we have a slipper on the ground, we have the dog's little bed, and we have toys and things like that. This is something that's really common in a household, and we don't want our puppy to chew up the toys or to chew up certain things that may not be there for the puppy. You don't want your puppy chewing up all your kids' toys. They're not gonna be too happy with that. So we wanna set the dog up so we can reward them the exact moment that they do it correctly, but we also wanna set them up for failure so we can show them what they can't do and then reward them for doing the correct behavior. So I'm gonna bring the puppy in and when I first introduce a puppy to a new household, I wanna have that puppy on a leash. This way I can show the puppy everything that they're supposed to do and in the very beginning, I like to keep the puppy close to me. I want them to get into that habit of being next to me because remember, when you have a puppy running throughout your house, you better have eyes on because if that puppy goes to the bathroom and you don't see them go to the bathroom, you can't correct them for that. And every single time that your puppy goes to the bathroom inside the house, they're starting to think that that's an okay behavior and it's gonna be much harder to break. So in the very beginning, I like to keep the puppy close to me. Now we're gonna bring the puppy inside and we wanna keep him on a leash so we can show him exactly what they can and cannot do. He's behaving very nicely outside waiting. Come on, buddy. Good boy. So first thing I want to do is I want to hook the leash onto him and I'm just going to stand here at the doorway. Yes. And he's looking up at me, which I like. And during the introduction into the household, we're going to be using our free shaping. Yes. I don't have anything in mind that I want him to do necessarily, except for maybe go on a little dog bed right there. But if he's looking up at me, if he's sitting politely, if he's acting the way I want him to act, then I'm going to reward him for that. And I'm keeping the leash loose. Yes and I want him to stay close to me. I don't want him to start exploring on his own. Okay, so now I'm gonna walk this way and I'm actually gonna use luring and guide him onto his bed. Show him that this is a little area for him to hang out if he wants. Yes, good boy. And again, no commands. And now we're gonna walk over here where we have all the toys laid out and I'm gonna let him explore the toys but I want him to know that he cannot just pick a toy up on his own. So again, letting him kind of explore but not letting him pick up any bad habits or any bad behavior. So he's trying to get that toy. I'm going to stop him. I'm going to stop him from doing that. And we're going to walk him around. I have a couple socks over here, something that a lot of people end up running into, especially with golden retrievers and Labrador retrievers is they'll get a hold of somebody's socks in the house. They'll eat that sock. And then you have a dog that has a ruptured bowel or blockage. And that could be very costly, but it also can be very dangerous for the dog. And we don't want our dog to, have a shorter life than what they should have because of negligence. So he's right next to the socks right now. He's tried picking them up a couple times and you can see all I'm doing is I'm lifting up on the leash, preventing him from playing with the socks. Yes. Good boy. Very nice. And then rewarding him when he's doing what I want, which right now it's just simply sitting there nicely, not playing with the sock. I'm also going to sit down on the couch. I don't want him jumping up on the furniture. So if he jumps up on the furniture, Yes, good boy. Again, he's still doing really nice, so I'm gonna give him another treat. Good job, buddy. Very nice, giving him some feedback. Let's see if he wants to kind of lean back a little bit, see if he's gonna jump up. So he tried taking off. I stopped him from taking off, pull him back a little bit, and then keep the leash loose. I'm okay with him being underneath the table. A lot of dogs, you'll find out, they'll actually go underneath the table because it's almost a little den. All right, so we're gonna take him, we're gonna walk him back this way, a little bit of leash, leash pressure. Good. And then we're gonna start walking. We're gonna start to explore the rest of the house. Come on, buddy. Not letting him take the toys. 
Good, excellent. And I don't want him walking faster than me. So again, pull back and then loose leash. And then we're gonna to start to walk. So we have our little slipper over here. Let's see if he goes for the slipper. Yes, he's not even looking at the slipper. That's excellent. Maybe if I move it a little bit. So again, yes, very nice, good job. He's starting to understand how the leash works. He feels a little bit of tension. He knows that that means stop doing what you're doing. And then you notice at that time he looked right up at me. Yes. And then I was able to give him a piece of food. So we're going to start walking around again. And this is just developing those manners that we want our puppy to have as they grow up inside of our house. So again, a little bit of tension preventing him from going too far ahead of me. I want him to stay within a six foot kind of circle around me. He's going fast again, so I'm gonna stop moving. Good boy, very nice. Yes, he looks up at me. I'm gonna reward that again. So we're gonna come over here. And I wanna see if he's gonna to try to jump up on the couch. My niece over here is taking a little nappies. So let's see if he comes over. So he's trying to pick up a piece of paper, so I stopped him from that. I'm gonna guide him over. Let's see if he tries jumping up on the couch. Nope, and he's doing great. Excellent. We're gonna walk around the kitchen as well. Yes. Good boy. Good job, buddy. Good, I'm gonna give him another treat. He's doing really nice. Yes, very good, my little buddy. Now we're gonna start walking this way. Doing really well, he's staying, yes. He's staying with my pace. Good job. And we're gonna wanna do this throughout the entire house or wherever you're gonna have your puppy inside the house. Some people will close off certain parts of their house to prevent the puppy from going in those areas or you might put gates up, but wherever you're gonna have your puppy, you wanna make sure you do exactly what I'm doing right now. And I'll usually do this for a couple weeks before I even take the leash off. I really wanna show the puppy how to behave properly. Now we can take the leash off and play with the puppy and have some fun if we wanna do that, but we're not gonna let the puppy explore the house on their own because the moment they run around the corner, that's when you find a little stain on the carpet or you might find a surprise you don't want. So this is gonna be a really good way to do that. Another thing that you might run into is a puppy that could be a little cautious or uncomfortable going up the stairs and we're gonna help him along the way. I have some really nice high value treats and I'm gonna use the treats to get him to come up the stairs. So it's gonna be a very slow, easy, patient process. Oh, well, never mind. He's going up really nicely. Before I started to film this, he was uh, frozen at the bottom of the stairs and he didn't want to come up. So I don't like to force him. I can just guide him nicely and make it a positive experience. The entire thing about confidence building, so he's getting a little cautious now, so we're still gonna help him and I'm gonna give him some rewards. He's putting in the effort. We wanna reward him throughout the journey. The more pleasant of an experience your puppy has, the more confidence they're going to have and the overall better uh, well-rounded dog you'll have as they get older. Good boy. Now he's already going up the stairs way faster than before. Good job, little man. Yes, excellent. All right, so he went to the bathroom. We played a little bit outside. And now I want to introduce him to where he's going to be sleeping at night. So what I'm gonna do, I wanna make this a pleasant experience. And when you're crate training the dog, the crate should be just big enough for the dog to stand up, turn around and lay down. You don't want a crate that's so big that your puppy can go to the bathroom on one side and then sleep on the other side. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some of the food and I'm gonna throw it inside the crate. He didn't see it, so I'm gonna take a little bit more and throw it in. You gotta be patient. Come on, buddy. Come on. Come on, big guy. Come on. Good boy. And I'm trying to throw it so he can hear it hit the inside. 
and we're gonna let him go in and we're not gonna close the door on him. We're gonna have him go in and then he can come right back out. This is how I like to introduce puppies to their new crate or any crate and I wanna make it as comfortable as possible. A lot of times when I'm putting a puppy to bed at night, I might give them a little bone to chew on, something that's gonna make them associate really nice feelings with their crate. We don't wanna make the crate a punishment. We don't wanna make it a bad place. We want it to be a really nice, comfortable place. So he comes back out and I'm gonna give him another piece of food. Good job, buddy. Now I'm gonna take the food and throw it back in. And just let him go back in. This is a really simple way to introduce your puppy nicely to their crate and to make it a pleasant experience and to also not be closing the door on them right away. And if he lays down in there and he gets comfortable, it looks like he's looking for some of the treats that are tucked into the back. So I'm gonna wait for him to turn around. And when he turns around, I'm gonna give him some piece from some, some food from my hand. Good job, buddy. Good boy. So he's going to get a couple right there. And he's kind of relaxing right now. He's already had a long day, so he's just sitting back, relaxing. Still digging for some food. Looks like he's coming back out. Good boy. Very nice. Very nice, my little man. Do you want some more? Again, throw some more in there and allow him to go in, get the treats, and come back out. And This is also a really good opportunity to start teaching your dog or your puppy the crate command. So when I have the puppy going in and out, the puppy's really starting to trust me, I can start introducing the command. Whether you want it to be crate or get into your house or whatever it is you wanna call it, all we're gonna do is we're gonna say the name of the command and then we're gonna throw the food inside of the crate. Once the puppy goes inside of the crate or the kennel, then we can mark that if we choose to. The puppy will get the food inside and then when the puppy comes back out, if you are marking it, I want you to use your terminal marker because we're gonna start working on a crate stay later where the dog or the puppy has to stay inside of the crate with the crate door open. So for now, if you're gonna mark it, let's use the terminal marker. So we'll use free, that way he can come back out. He can get some more food and we can do the step or the process again. And you can see I got some blankets in there. I want it to be nice and comfortable for him. And another common thing that a lot of people will do when they get their new puppy is they'll put the puppy in the crate and the puppy might cry or whine or do something like that. And what they do is they put the puppy in a separate room away from them. They'll put their ear uh, earplugs in to try to not hear the puppy and just ignore it. Everyone thinks that you're supposed to ignore that whining. When you have a really young puppy like Derby here, He's not crying or whining when he's separated from everybody because he's trying to manipulate us. What he's doing is he's acting out a natural animal behavior. If a puppy is separated from their pack, they're gonna cry so the mom can find them and bring them back. So what I like to do is I always have the puppy right next to the bed at night. So that way the puppy feels comfortable, they're not alone, and see now he's starting to go back in on his own. This is great, that's what we want. We want him to be really comfortable and happy in his environment. Good job, buddy. This is really important. And then if he is whining at night, all I usually do if I'm the one, so like I said, he's staying in my niece's room. And if the puppy starts to whine, all I do is I put my fingers into the crate and I let the puppy know that I'm still there. A lot of puppies might lick your fingers or do something like that, but we wanna make it, again, really pleasant and we want our puppy to trust us. So I'm gonna do a couple more reps of this and this is gonna be a really nice introduction and we'll be able to move on with more training. So I'm gonna add the command now. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna use crate for him. Let him know that I have the food, get his attention. And then I'm just gonna say crate and then I'm gonna throw the food in. It's really that easy. And every single time I put him in the crate, I'm gonna say crate and I'm gonna throw the food in. Before you know it, he'll be running inside of the crate on command just like that, and it's gonna be a nice, pleasant experience for him. All right, our puppy made it up the stairs with no problem. Now we're gonna bring him back down the stairs. So we're gonna take our time just like we did last time, and I'm gonna walk him down each step. And this is a little harder. Hi, little man. Come on, buddy. Good boy. And even if they crawl, again, we want every experience to be a nice, positive experience. Come on, little buddy. Who's my little Mia? And plus, it's really cute. Good boy. Excellent. And right now, I know you can't see, it's difficult to see, but he's getting little pieces of food with every step. 
And remember, when you're working with your dog, success builds success. Come on, buddy. Come on, buddy. Good boy. That's very nice. And what I like to do if they're struggling is all I'm going to do is I'm going to reach underneath him and I'm going to help him out. So I'm going to provide some, some comfort right there and I'm going to walk him down. Good boy. Giving him little bites. Very nice. Good. That's my good little man. Give him some more treats too. All right, so this is gonna be a little bit more difficult. So I'm not gonna rush him at all on this. And I'm running out of treats. So all I want him to do is get the first step one at a time. Good boy. Good. Good job, buddy. Good boy, come on. And then now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the leash pressure that we taught earlier. So there's a little bit of pressure and I'm gonna wait them out. Come on, buddy. And remember when you use leash pressure, number one rule, once you start the pressure, you can't turn it off until they comply. Come on, buddy. Good, so I'm waiting for Goody. Step down one step and I'm gonna turn the pressure off. And I'll let him go back down a step or go back if he wants. There he goes, good boy. Good boy, buddy. Who's my good boy? Who's my good boy? Good job, buddy. And I'm right here just in case so he doesn't fall. He doesn't have a bad experience. Good boy. That's my good little man. And he's doing great. Good boy, buddy. <laughs> good job. There he goes. He's a little pro. You're a little pro. There you go. Excellent. And that's how we're going to introduce our dog going down the stairs. <laughs>